the question is, is our dog food safe? And I know that raw food is definitely much safer than processed food that has ingredients from all these different places and don't even know where it comes from and rendered meats and ingredients that are unsuitable for human consumption and who knows what. But there is a way, there is a simple way for us to figure out whether our dogs are toxic or not. So you can test actually not only for toxins, but you can also test for deficiencies of minerals. Obviously, you can also measure vitamin levels and you can measure amino acids levels. But again, those tests would be really expensive if we tried to do them all the time. But I find that there is one reliable test that is really inexpensive. It costs about $100 plus minus, and uh, it will give you an idea if there are any minerals missing and what toxins your dog's body contains. These are just examples of some results here. You can see that this dog, um, one year, was missing iron. And uh, the next year, the iron was much better. If you see that your dog has low iron levels, you can actually sear the food, um, your raw meat, just very slightly on a cast iron pan. Just make it raw inside. Just sear it very slightly. And it will actually be enough iron for your dog. That's what I used to do in the practice. No supplements, just iron pan. Uh, you can see that uh, there was also an uh, increased level of magnesium here. And again, more magnesium. So at that point, I would actually just be looking at uh, the sources of magnesium, would be analyzing the dog's food and see whether there is some sort of unusual situation. Maybe this um, dog guardian was adding magnesium in the food. Maybe the dog was depressed or something. Who knows? <laughs> So this is uh, the pink area is the area for toxins. You can see that one year the arsenic levels were 0.08 and the next year there was quite a bit of elevation, about three and a half times elevation of arsenic level. I discovered that this particular dog started getting rice and rice is high in arsenic because it's grown mostly in Asia and um, the waters in Asia where rice is grown are usually polluted with arsenic. If I eat rice, I usually eat California rice because the arsenic levels are much lower and uh, there is less industrial pollution in California. Again, strontium, radioactive pollution, I discovered that, that dogs that eat sardines actually have higher levels of radioactive strontium from the time when Fukushima disaster happened, it started rising. And there is an article on my website if you're curious about that because strontium replaces calcium in bones and sardines are eaten with bones. And that's, how, that's why sardines are actually much more likely to be a source of strontium for your dog. So hair tests is actually one of the ways of uh, figuring out whether your dog's uh, diet is deficient in minerals and whether there are uh, any toxins and what levels are there are. I usually recommend running a test once every 12 months and I run it on me as well. Believe it or not, I can save my hair and then run it. It's been very helpful and uh, definitely correlates with, uh, with the health of, um, of my patients. If you supplement minerals, um, the healthy minerals are like, are like passengers on a fully booked plane. Like if you supplement full spectrum of minerals, the toxins cannot get into the cell, into the body, because they compete for the receptors with the healthy, with the good minerals. So if you have an empty flight, if you have a depleted dog, uh, then those toxins can actually get in much more readily. So part of the detox is actually providing good levels of healthy minerals. These are some of the ratios and competing minerals. So you can see that calcium competes with uh, lead. Iron competes with lead. Uh, iron competes with mercury as well. So iron is really cool, actually, in that way. Selenium with mercury. Zinc with cadmium. It's another heavy metal, cadmium. Zinc with, um, with uh, mercury, again. Sulfur with mercury. Sulfur with cadmium. Sulfur competes with uh, lead. So those are some of the examples, again. Uh, some of the herbs that we could use in detox uh, here, cilantro is great for getting rid of mercury. I discovered after several years that um, it actually doesn't take that long to get mercury out of the system if you use detox. Uh, milk this is good for detoxing the liver. Uh, you will learn more on the detox page. I wanted to mention the spinal health. Again, I believe that your dog's health your dog is as healthy as as his or her spine 
Mm -hmm. uh, we do so many activities with our dogs. They slip and slide and, and become older mm -hmm. and decrepit and the spinal energy flow doesn't flow as well. And there's, there are many articles on my website that talk about that. Again, this is spinal energy flow. You can see that certain segments of the spine, the little arrows that go down, they actually affect certain organs. So I'll give you an example. If your dog has lumbar spine issues, he or she may have diarrhea because it, it reflects in the intestinal tract. If your dog has pain or discomfort in, the, in between the scapulae, uh, it can affect the heart and the lungs. That's where the energy flow goes from, comes from. Uh, some of the injuries happen by slipping, sliding, excessive jumping and leaping, uh, excessive sprinting, activities that dogs in nature would not do as much, right? They would chase the rabbit for half a minute, not for 30 minutes. I am a strong believer that herbs and natural extracts and concentrates and homeopathy should be used before conventional medicine. Nutritional therapy is actually, there are some examples here of nutritional therapy. We, I, I'm sure that you've heard quite a few of them. Uh, turmeric is great for inflammation. CBD, Dr. Silver has talked about CBD and THE, THC. Uh, mushrooms are used, coconut oil for antibacterial properties for powering the brain. Apple cider vinegar is really great for um, adjusting the, the bacteria flora of the intestine and digestive tract. I discovered that when I have apple cider vinegar on empty stomach that it makes me giggle and I wanted to try it. So my sisters and I, we are just traveling together right now, right? My sister's celebrating her birthday. We tried it together and we giggled the whole morning. It was very funny. So if you want to try it, do it because it's, it seems to boost, uh, boost mood without alcohol, which is great. Cranberries for urinary tract infections. I put phytoplankton here because some people asked me, and you know, I, I think phytoplankton on its own can be good, but I, I have questions of, of, of purity. Sometimes it can be, um, it, you know, it can gather plastic micro, micro elements and, and, uh, and pollutants. So you have to be really careful about how clean it is and it's difficult to clean out. Green leaf muscle is great for joints. So ingredient quality and origin are super important. I learn to kind of know that it's better to source from countries where the quality control is better, but it's not total guarantee. Uh, I decided not to source from China because it just, you know, it's, um, it's a little bit of a wild card. But uh, ask your, you know, the supplements that you use, ask the manufacturers, where do they source from? Uh, how do they make the supplements and all that? What I hope for, we will be able to achieve together as a community in the years to come that we will actually prevent and avoid the double standards in medicine. I was told by the College of Veterinary Medicine in British Columbia that I should always say that holistic medicine is not scientifically proven. And when I say, well, it's a double standard because conventional medicine is not scientifically proven, they just said it's a double standard. And I think that the only way we can actually change this is to start doing research. We know that some of these things are self-evident, but until we start proving them, until we start proving them to those who don't believe, to those who don't know what they don't know, it'll be battle. It'll be endless battle. So let's try to figure out together if you have any ideas or if you have any resources, if you wanted to sponsor some studies, if you wanted to do any of that, I'm sure that we can find scientists and researchers who would be actually willing to help us. And then we won't need to use the medicine that leaves the bikes and the towers and the tennis rackets on the plane and add some more, right? So experience and research. Research is absolutely key. We know that experience is good and we can actually use it and we can help animals, but it is still not enough. So once again, please participate in the study. And if you wanted to find some of the articles that I was talking about, about the uh, spinal energy flow and how to treat diarrhea and how to exercise your dog safely and all that, you can go to the website. The Healthy Dog Tool has been really helpful for some dog lovers to find the articles and, and kind of customize the supplement plan for their dog. So I hope you'll find it useful and you share it with your friends. And thank you so much for listening. Give your dog a hug for me. Take care. <laughs>